Today, the Trin Level channel, the Trin Level universe is having a full circle moment. It's all coming back to square one. If you didn't know, Teen Wolf and Paramount decided to release a Teen Wolf movie. In the era of reboots, sequels, and requels, no one could have expected this outcome of Teen Wolf getting a movie requel. Because Teen Wolf's final season and their final ending to give to their fans was an absolute pardon my French, shit show. And if you are not a longtime trend viewer, which many people aren't, that's completely fine. I used to be the biggest Teen Wolf fan ever. Not to mention, it was the first show I ever did reactions and reviews on. So I wanted to say all my history on Teen Wolf to let you guys know, I, this is not just me watching a cringy reboot. This is an avid fan coming back. I've already heard a lot of the news about the Teen Wolf movie. And if you've been following kind of the little like press releases that have been following up until this release of the movie, it has been really bad. So you're bringing back characters and you're leaving out major roles. So Dylan O'Brien and Arden Cho both decided to not come back. Dylan O'Brien, I have no idea why he didn't want to come back. And Arden Cho did not come back because they were not giving her an equal pay like her other co-stars were which is just another another hit to Arden Cho and Kira Yukimura's character because her character has been through so much. I will get into all the disservices that Kira Yukimura faced within Teen Wolf later. It was a huge slap in the face for them to do that to Arden Cho because this movie is surrounding um, and kind of reviving the season 3B plot, which was their most successful season. So of course they would want to bring it back for this revival movie. What's shitty about that is that Kira and Styles were like the most crucial characters of that season. Like they were literally without them the season wouldn't have happened and so to not have them back you should have just shut down the whole movie if you were not able to get dylan o'brien and kira yukimura on you should have just shut it down because all the other characters don't matter if you're going to be referencing the nugitsune and all of that being said is very important and i had to say it all before we got started it's time to actually watch the movie <laughs> Wow. That was like not even trying. <laughs> like, you didn't even try, and you work at a Japanese restaurant and you're not even trying. It was made from the wood of a sacred tree used to capture a dark kitsune. So whatever it is you came here looking for. You know exactly what I came here looking for, Mr. Dunbar. You all do. So the whole entire story revolves around the new Gitsune and Fox Spirits. All these Asian people and you couldn't hire Arden Cho back. Awesome. You can't get any better than this. You love using Japanese stories and folk tales, but you won't pay the Asian actress who was playing said Japanese Korean character, Kira Yukimura, the proper pay. Okay, awesome. Oh, this sucks because you're undoing everything that you did in season 3B that made season 3B good. Ooh, ooh, it's so bad. Oh my God, it's so bad. And who was that person that was putting on a weird Batman voice? You're evil and you're gross. <laughs> I took my eyes off the road for like two seconds. Quiet. I, whether or not that's like a hallucination or like the Nugget today playing tricks on him, it really bothers me that they bring Allison back. Um, not because I hate her, no, far from it. I actually really liked Allison in her like prime. Like I loved her. I just think it's ridiculous that they will go to such extent to bring back Allison, but they couldn't bring back Kira and Siles. Like, like you're not making any sense. You are doing triple backflips to bring Allison back from the dead, but you are not willing to just pay Arden Cho enough to bring Kira back to us. In this day and age, you're really letting your co-star get paid less than you? <sighs> on Paramount streaming, like, come on. 
It's not just a dream. Allison is caught between life and death. It's not that simple. Just a word. It's a concept. Well, that fucking concept is- That fucking- What? Why do, Why does this need to be rated R? <laughs> why do we need an F-bomb? Who needed an F-bomb in Teen Wolf? Not me. I really didn't care. Didn't care for that. But if you drive out tomorrow, I can meet you there by afternoon. This is the most um, half-assed plot I've ever witnessed in my entire life. This is the epitome of reading a fan fiction alternate universe story. Scott and Allison's dad teaming up to go bring Allison back from the fucking dead. You are not even trying. Out of all the things that have happened after Allison died, you guys are acting so dumb. Like, are you kidding me? Like I said, if this were to happen, the first person you would go to would not be Neaton. It would be the Yuka freaking Moras because they've been through it twice. They saved your ass twice. Like cutting out the Yuka Moras from the plotline is completely ridiculous. And 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 literally, it's enough to not do the movie. It does not work without them. Why do I have a feeling that's about me, or maybe my son? He has a son with who? That looks nothing like Derek. That's a fully white child. That looks nothing like Derek. Derek looks ambiguous in, in, in a way. He looks a little bit ambiguous, right? So that's Derek's child who looks so white, he looks Norwegian. Okay, like, okay, okay. You couldn't dye his hair. You couldn't get the guy that played young Derek to come back or something. You couldn't get someone with like dark brown hair. And who's the, who's the mother? Who's the mother? I don't even remember the last girlfriend Derek had. I think the only girlfriend that Derek had that I liked was Brayden. And that, that boy does not look like it's half Brayden and half Derek. This is bothering me. I, <laughs> It's like every single choice of this movie, they were like, okay. It literally seems like a fan fiction where it's like, yeah, Derek's son has bright blue eyes and auburn hair. Literally looks like it could be Lydia's son. By the looks of it, Lydia and Styles aren't together. So awesome. <laughs> That's great. Um, build up, slow burn, all for nothing, thrown away, <laughs> into the garbage. <laughs> well, Lydia called, begging me to help as usual. And I said, okay, so long as she promised never to tell Ethan because I promised Ethan that I would never come back to this nightmare hellscape of a town. But why do we need Jackson's help? What would Jackson do? He wasn't even there when it happened. Ethan should have came back and he should have questioned if Aiden was in the same Bardo state that Allison was in because he died the same way. I never really liked Jackson and I was a little excited when he came back in season five or maybe it was season six, but he wasn't a big enough character for the reboot movie. Never. Oh, never. Pause. I don't, I don't even know what to say. I just saw her leap through the air like a spider monkey, but as Makey. And she's with Parrish. That was never a plot line. That was never a plot line. It would have been, it would make more sense if Lydia and Parrish were together at this point. They put Malia with anyone. They like literally have no care in the world for her storyline. She's been with Styles. She's been with Scott. She was almost with Theo and now she's with Parrish. It's like, you guys have no respect for her whatsoever. They're just doing stuff to do stuff at this point. Like they don't care. This is honestly just sad. Like, and whoever directed that scene, jail. Out of all the ways to introduce Malia's character, all the badass ways we could have seen her character, you decided to have her leap through the air. Make it. Ew, I just saw his booty cheeks. What in the world? Ew. Ew. You made Teen Wolf movie rated R so you could show Parrish's butt cheeks? Are you kidding me? There's only one man's ass I want to see, and that's freaking Derek Hale.
That's the ass I want to see. Perish, perish your butt was fine. It's his butt that I want to see. Derek Hale. That's the butt I want to see. I'm still caught up on the fact that it's Malia and Parrish and they have this like relationship that like doesn't make sense. They, I don't even think they exchange sentences with each other in the original series. I, I don't even think if you looked at Malia's character and asked her who Parrish was, she would know who that is. If you're going to show some ass in this, you should have shown me Derek Hale's ass, his daddy ass. That's what you should have shown. What is it? Darkness, you motherfucker! Pause. Like, I'm actually speechless. I'm actually so speechless right now. Darkness, you motherfucker. Awesome. Oh, it's so bad. I did not expect it to be this bad. Wow. Play. Didn't even try to catch it. Didn't even try to catch it. Awesome. So now the fly is just going to keep bouncing between them. Awesome. Great. That's awesome. That's aw so great. That's literally so smart. Oh my God. Stop. Hey guys. <laughs> what is that? I don't even want to talk about it. I, like, I don't even want to say anything about that. Cause like, what is that? I know you're about to piss me off. <laughs> I know you're about to piss me off right now. Your fuck pause. I, You're pissing me off. You're pissing me off on this night. On this holy night, you're pissing me off. She just appeared from like pixie dust. But as booty ass naked, I have seen, how many butts have I seen? Three, too many. One thing we didn't need from a Teen Wolf reboot, seeing everyone's ass. I didn't need to see that. You're, you're, you're using up your rated R. You're, 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 you're over utilizing your R rating. So that explanation of Allison being resurrected is kind of doo-doo. <laughs> it is kind of doo-doo. I'm thinking about my son getting a little playing time tonight. I think that's a great idea. You don't know who my son is, do you? I don't know who you are, but you look- <laughs> I don't know who you are. Four minutes, not a second longer. What about four and a half? I I am perfectly fine with that. And that was the best scene I've ever watched. That's the best scene of the movie so far. Coach and Derek, best scene of the movie. You got me there. Awesome. And that's just because the actor that plays Coach is a really good actor. The usage of Asian characters in this movie is kind of wild. <laughs> like, right? I'm not like crazy, right? The usage of Asian characters within this movie is fucking insane. And I just spit everywhere, but it is fucking insane. The spirit in you, it's old, it's drawn to begin heels. Yeah, I'm gonna, I, I'm, I'm putting my foot down on that. The usage of Asian characters in this story is kind of just mocking me at this point. Like, it's kind of just like throwing dirt in my face at this point. Give them to me. I hate it because I loved the Kitsune storyline. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was so clever and I loved the usage of Kitsunes and I thought it was so amazing. And now it's all tainted because they couldn't just pay one actor enough. I don't remember liking riddles. Oh my God, she literally doesn't even feel like Allison. This is so fucking stupid. Alisa, Argent. It feels like he's doing a little bit too much now. Scott McCall. Like the actor came back and he's doing a little bit too much. Like, calm down. It's not that serious. Like, none of this is that serious. And the winning move. What's the winning move? We call it the divine move. I, I'm gonna do horrible things to this. Uh, anyone who was involved with the making of this movie, I'm gonna do horrible things to you. It's just saying things at this point. You're literally just saying things from season three and being like, yeah. It's like when you write certain lines to get people in the audience to go, woohoo! Divine move, woohoo! Styles, woohoo! No mention of Kira Yukimura at all. The way her ancestors were literally like the, the, the single singular piece to be connected to the Nugitsu today? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That's the one name you won't shout out for, for an applause. 
Today's video is sponsored by Raycon. You guys know I love my Raycons. I use my Raycons all the time. I use them when I'm filming, so that means I use them when I'm editing and I'm recording. They're also my go-to workout earbuds. I always use them when I go to the gym because they have noise isolation and awareness mode, and they are also water and sweat resistant, so I don't have to worry about them breaking if I'm sweating gallons and gallons of sweat. That's really gross. Raycon makes it so you don't have to choose. You can get premium sound quality without breaking your bank. Raycons come at about half the price of other premium audio brands on the market right now. With all these things, it's no wonder that Raycon has over 50,000 five-star reviews. I've had this pair of Raycons for I think about three years and they are still going very strong. They're dirty because I am disgusting, but <laughs> they have still been going super strong. I even broke the case because I was I was going a little too hard and everything still works perfectly fine. Um, I can't say that for um, some of my other wireless earbuds. I think they died within a year and a half whereas Raycons have lasted me so long. This one is a veteran. This little white pair is a veteran. She's taken her place because she's pink and pink is better, but <laughs> these are the OGs. These are, these are the ones that I've used in pr practically all my videos. So if you're ready to have something small with a big impact, you guys can click the link in my description or go to buyraycon.com slash trend to get 15% off your Raycon order today. And if you buy a pair of Raycons, just know that that is in turn supporting me and supporting this channel and making it so I can make all this content for you guys. Also, Raycon contributes to this channel because they are the earbuds that I use to make these videos. So make sure you guys go check out Raycon. Thank you, Raycon, for sponsoring today's video. Okay. I, I've just been filled with rage. They just, they literally put in a stand-in Kira. Awesome. Just throw in another Kitsune. I am so far beyond upset about how their their usage with their usage of Asian characters within this story. It is foul. It is so transparent. It's so transparent. Just using Asians for the sake of it, just being like yeah, we love their folk tales, but we don't really like paying them as much. What's also killing me is that not only are they not including Styles or Kira, they're not explaining it. They won't even mention Kira Yukimura's name. They won't even say her name in this godforsaken thing. Ridiculous. So stupid. Oh, I hate this. He passes out, things come out. He's on the floor. Claws too. I, and also what I'm getting from this is that the Malia Parrish storyline is so irrelevant to what's going on. It's almost as if you didn't need to include it. Like, that's what I'm getting from it. I'm also seeing that Jackson really wasn't necessary either. <laughs> Great. <laughs> A lot of unnecessary people here. People that he slashed my throat once and it killed me. When it comes to you, most of us try to forget. That is no way to speak to your father. I don't care about you either. Every single character they're bringing back is like a whoa, like, oh my God, character. This is this one's gonna get them. People are gonna love seeing this character come back. It's like so, so lackluster to me. I'm watching it like I'm, I'm watching the same thing I've watched for years. Does anybody remember in season six when he like took out his eyeballs? <laughs> like he took out his eyeballs and then he magically got them back. <laughs> like he literally blinded himself to defeat the enemy and then he just got him back. Like, why doesn't anyone want to talk about that? I was done by a sword. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I'm like, I'm such a hater. I'm such a hater because every single time they say stuff, I just am like, yeah, okay. You'll never be Kira. I'm sorry. Like, I'm just like upset by it because it's obviously like they needed a kitsune in the story, but they could not just pay Arden Cho enough to just, so stupid. And no hate to this girl, like at all. Oh, she just died. No hate to her, but she did just die. Maybe it's good that Kira wasn't in this. They probably just would have taken the opportunity to kill her. Okay, well, I'm assuming not all of these people are dying. They're probably like going into a jar or something. 
This is like the same thing that happened in season six when they were all like turning into stone, right? They like all turned into stone in the school and then they got like turned on stone or something, right? That happened in the sixth season, I remember. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's definitely a choice. Dude, this is Teen Wolf. This is OG Teen Wolf right here. Kira and Scott in the desert. Dude, this green screen goes crazy. Never forget your roots. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. There's blood. But <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, we can see. Why were you snip? Why did you go on all fours to sniff it? It was a huge pile right in front of you. What do you mean there's blood all around us? We could see it clearly. If we don't die tonight, we can talk about the look. If that had any setup in the prior seasons, awesome but it didn't, so it's kind of just a waste of my time. Not saying that everything has to be connected to the original seasons, but it wasn't even built up in this movie, so I can't even, I can't even think of it, of anything of value. He says, brothers and sisters, have I none, but this man's father is my father's son. He's doing way too much, he's doing, Absolutely way too much. None of it is that serious. Calm down. Be calm. And that's so foul. That's, that scene from that episode is such a crucial moment, not for Allison, but for Styles and Scott. It's about their friendship. When Styles takes it, it's like, I will die. I will live and die with you. And it is amazing and it is one of the most like heartfelt scenes of the show and you just throw it in there like oh my god it's a flashback of allison no it was about styles and scott oh my god like you're literally ruining every single moment of this goddamn show i think i remember you or maybe someone like you maybe someone i was in love with and maybe she's like i think i remember someone named isaac <laughs> i think i remember a hottie with a body named isaac He's not here either. Would have been great if he was here too because he was also a crucial part. Maybe not as crucial as the others, but he was like a very big part of season 3B. Adrian Harris. Uh, he he kind of looks like our chemistry teacher. I was your chemistry teacher, Jackson. You fucking imbecile. <laughs> Do it. Pause the fuck right now. Who the fuck are you? All that buildup for him to be fucking nobody? Are you kidding me? All that for him to be revealed and us, everyone be like, who is that? He wouldn't let me come near him for days. That look of fear in his eyes when he saw me. That's why he can't change. Every time he starts to, or he must see my face snarling back at him. Why well, is that kind of good? Best plot written. Actually, you've done something with that one. Wait, they kind of like actually, that was actually a very good dialogue scene and a really good backstory behind Eli's transformations. Love it. He needed me to help him win. All I had to do was give him my pain. Thanks to you and Scott McCall, I have plenty. It's supposed to be this like, oh my God, he's in so much pain. He's getting all these people back. Like, but who the fuck are you? Literally, like, you don't know. I don't know who you are. It would have been better to bring Jennifer back. Like, you are a nobody. Like, you are the epitome of a nobody. Because if she didn't tell me who you were, I wouldn't have known who you were. Damn, that sucks. Um, that was definitely an effect. <laughs> it definitely was one. What? Oh, bullshit. Bullshit. That was stupid. That was so stupid. Fox fire was his protection from that. Are you fucking kidding me? That's so stupid. Cause I would have been Kira. And the thing is, the funny thing is, is that they would have brought Kira back just for Scott to say that he's in love with Allison. You gotta be fucking kidding me. What is that? Silver, you motherfucker. It's like, they just, they said, just say what you want. It really is like they just gave people screen time and said like, okay, go. <laughs> okay, do what you want. What you've always wanted to do, just do it. We don't care. <laughs> that 
They're kind of good. I kind of like, they're the best addition to the movie and the storyline that I've actually enjoyed. I thought it was kind of cute, very refreshing, and a wonderful character development on Derek's part, right? Like it actually moves his character forward and he had, he had something to overcome within the movie. It was great. <laughs> It's just like, there's so many people, like, why is it so difficult? No. The fact that Parrish can't hold this motherfucker down by himself is yeah. concerning. He's supposed to be such a powerful supernatural creature and he can't hold this little goblin down. Parrish, light this fucker up. I just like wish they didn't. <laughs> I wish they didn't do things like that. So really all of you guys are very useless. Damn, his shorts stayed on? That like is so stupid. <laughs> like, I can't think of anything more stupid than that. That's so stupid. Like, I get it, it's supposed to be a sacrifice at the end of the movie. It should have been Scott to die. Scott dying at the end of all of this, so funny and so like way more powerful than anything. That, not powerful. Derek had the best storyline in this whole thing and you killed him at the end? Ridiculous. So stupid. This kid is left without a father and now Allison and Scott are gonna play mommy and daddy for him. I'm, I'm sick to my stomach. I'm sick to my stomach. She's been dead for 15 years. You know how fast the culture moves? She doesn't even, she's not gonna know anything. Oh my God. And it wasn't even like a good death either. It was cause he had to hold him down and he burned up into flames. I don't even think you're Derek Hale's son. You don't look anything like him. Not an ounce of that tall, dark and handsome in you. I'm not worried about the past. Or your best friend, apparently. <laughs> or apparently your best friend that you like literally wanted to live and die by. Or that, you don't care about that. It's still going. It just keeps going, guys. It just doesn't stop. There's always a new one. Oh my God, it just never ends. It just doesn't stop, guys. It just keeps on going. Remember who you are. Ending the movie on a still of him looking at me and breaking the fourth wall is like, <laughs> I don't have very many nice things to say about this movie. I think it was extremely long for the entire plot. I think it s didn't seem like a movie at all. It definitely felt like a show, a couple episodes of a show. Didn't feel like a movie at all. I'll start off with the good things because they're easy to point out. Um, Derek's plot was phenomenal other than his death. I think that he was pretty much the only character that had any development, um, development from the end of season six to now, and then also development throughout the movie. I think the backstory and the, the dynamic he has with his son was great. Kind of liked it that they didn't even mention the mom or who the mom was. I think it kind of would have been not very necessary at the end of the day. I quite liked Eli. I thought he was a fine character. I thought he was funny. I thought he was cute. He was, you know, kind of that charm of Teen Wolf that I feel like a lot of people liked. Um, was he kind of like a Styles ripoff? Kind of, but I was okay with it. But oh my God, was the rest of this movie dog shit. It really was. And that's not me just saying that in a way of like, oh my God, like they did certain characters dirty. It's like, if you compare it to what the actual show was, it kind of is just garbage. It's hot garbage because it doesn't, it tries to reinvent this story. And it is just, an, it's just taking back, it's taking out the things that you liked from season three packaging them up a little bit differently and hoping that you'll get an ooh ah because you're excited about seeing these references or excited about seeing them mention it again because in Teen Wolf after season 3B they kind of stopped mentioning the Gitsune. They kind of stopped mentioning the Oni and they referenced it even less after Kira left. Without Kira Yukimura, the story falls flat. It was her story. It was her story. Not only would it have been beneficial for their plot and what they were going for, it also would have been a great opportunity to rewrite their wrongs of Kira Yukimura's exit of the show. So phony to have that Japanese character with Liam and just be like, oh yeah, she's the kitsune. Like we need one, so we'll just make Liam go off to Japan, I guess, and work in a ramen place and have this love, whatever. Like. 
so half-assed, so half-assed and almost like, it's like, honestly, kind of like a mockery to me. I genuinely felt, and this might sound a little bit dramatic. I did feel like this whole movie was like spitting in my face when it came to their usage of Asian people. It truly did feel like, um, kind of like a mockery and almost like an exploitation, just kind of using, using J Japanese mythology and knowing that behind the scenes, they weren't willing to pay their Asian lead the same amount of her other co-stars is fucking ridiculous. And it is a mock, it's a straight up mockery and just so disgusting to me. Who, who was so unnecessary? Jackson, unnecessary. Literally, who are you and why are you here? You, you added nothing. Jackson added nothing. Liam and Kitsune added nothing because they just used her as another Asian female to fill the void of Kira Yukimura not being there. Okay, that feels great. <laughs> that feels awesome to, I must, that must feel great to just be like, oh yeah, we'll just, we'll just put in a different Asian girl and have her be a Kitsune as well. And it'll have the same effect. It'll have the exact same effect. The reveal of Harris as the person who orchestrated this all, so laughable so laughable because who are you out of every teen wolf character in the teen wolf universe you chose him the most irrelevant character i have ever laid eyes on it would have been a bigger event if coach was the person that was doing all that at least we knew who coach was at least we knew that oh my god it was i don't even know how to explain that that was awful and what i said earlier it just seemed like they pointed the camera at these actors and said do what you feel like do what you want that's literally what it was it was literally just them being like okay go like you've always wanted to say fuck in teen wolf go for it i wasn't really a hard fan to please i'm i'm really not that harsh of a critic usually especially for things that i like like things that i'm a major fan of i can let a lot of things go i can i can put on my rose colored glasses for most of it and this was just impossible to like. I have a hard time understanding how it moved past even the script because it felt like a, a fan fiction. I've seen teenagers write better continuations of Teen Wolf than this. So awesome, Jeff Davis. Going out with a bang. Haven't done much since Teen Wolf. And this is, this is their legacy. Awesome. And I think it's time that we tell actors from popular teen shows to let go and it's okay to move on it's perfectly fine to move on no more reunions unnecessary no more reunion fan events time to grow up let me know what you guys thought of this movie i am so excited to hear what you guys thought of this teen wolf movie i know many of you guys are teen wolf fans i know many of you guys were like eating it up when it was on air as i as i was i'm literally breaking my my little teenage self's heart right now because I'm ripping these characters that I once so loved. Once loved so deeply, I'm, I'm ripping them apart. That is it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Bye.